Now we're perfectly set up to start doing some cool things with layout. And I'm going to sort of have to go back and forth. I'm going to take this out of live view. Okay. And I'm going to really to be able to show you how it works is I'm going to have to go back and forth to showing you what it looks like in Firefox. So before I begin, it stretches to take up the entire page. That's not the look that I want. So I'm going to come back here after every couple of steps and show you the look that I actually want. So we're going to have to start playing now in our CSS. And we're going to get to the point where we do external CSS pages, but right now this is just really fast to show you what I'm doing. Now I'm going to add a couple of changes. Um, I want to change the background color here. something really dark. Now this is going to look terrible for a minute until I do a couple more things. Okay, does not look good. I know it. Don't worry about it. I'm going to add, now remember we're working from the, and I always get this wrong, IDs, we use the hash mark. So, and I like to do my tag redefining first and whenever I'm getting into something custom, I like to do that at the bottom, just the way I like to organize my page. So we're going to add the container. And that's the name that I gave the most outside of my divs, the one that wraps around from beginning to end. And so I'm going to add some special formatting to the container, and I want to show you it sort of evolve one piece at a time. So I'm going to start with um, a background color and we'll go back to that sort of ivory color okay so now you can see the body is dark gray and the interior because this shines through each div that's over it so I can actually make each div its own individual color that gets a little frantic at some point but I'm going to show you a little bit about that and then I'm going to, in the container, I'm going to set a maximum width. So we're going to set width to 960 pixels. Doesn't look like much here, but this is really super critical. So I really want you to see what that does. Okay, so now it maximizes this page so that I have set, I've defined my page width because you don't want it to grow all the way across a really large screen. Now I'm working on a 15 um, inch laptop and it growing across the 15 inch screen might be okay but this is going to look better. And you'll notice though that I'm aligned to the left with some margins here. So I'm going to go back and what I've got is this padding was set when I did the body I didn't do anything there. We could do that. I think I'd rather do it from the container. So here I'm going to set margin 10 px. That's going to be the top and bottom margin. And then auto, which is going to be the side margins. And this is really important. And you're not going to see a lot here but this is critical. It centers it. We, by doing the margin of the top and the bottom of 10 pixels, it guarantees that we have this background color sort of creating a frame. And what I like to do is I like to think of the body color like matting an image inside of a frame. It's there, that background color should be complementary, it should help whatever is inside, whatever the main picture is, it should draw attention to it. So I usually have some sort of muted color, often a dark gray or dark color that's um, reminiscent of what's in the image. Now why did that center it? The reason it centered it, we've got the 10 pixels top and bottom, but when we put in auto for your margins on the side, that's how you center a div. Okay, so Let's see, do I want to do anything else with that? Um, I could add some, 
padding here. just to show you what it would do, and I'll, I'll make it large and 15 pixels all around. And see that gives me the dis the padding is between this border because my container is a div so it has that border on it so the padding is in the inside of it and it makes everything else a little bit further away. And I'm even going to um, add a border color. And it's going to be something kind of obnoxious. This is not to make it look good, just so that you know what the div is. So you can see that's my container. It's got a red outline. So that is now separate. And that's overriding cascading styles. It's overriding the previous style. And it only impacts the container because it's specific to the ID and the most specific style, the container being an ID is always more specific than the generic div. That's why it shows red. Okay, so great. That's letting us do a little bit of layout, but mostly in the form of spacing. Now we get to the fun part. I want to take my references and move it to the side of the page. So I'm going to do some things wrong. Now, I really should do math here. I'm not going to, because we can get pretty close without it. But you could figure out, you have to count the margins, how many pixels those are, and things like that. Otherwise, things can float sort of funky if you start assigning sizes. But let's go see. This is my references, and I should have named it references, which I did. So I'm going to add a class for reference, which is also an ID. And I just do that because you should know that just by seeing the hash mark, but I'm a little dyslexic and I continuously forget which one is an ID and which one is a class. So that's just a note to myself. Okay, let's start playing with this a little bit at a time. We're going to set a width on it. 200 pixels. I want to show you that it's not looked the way I intended it to at all. Oh, 20 pixels. Whoops. Big difference. Okay, so now it's 200 pixels wide. And I really think that my padding's not enough there, so I'm going to keep playing with this. Now padding is going to add all the way around if I don't specify, and so we'll make it mm, 5px. It replaces, does not add to the existing padding, so that makes it a little wider. Okay, now this is the fun part. Float left. And this stuff all wraps up around it. We can float right. But the other stuff is still intersecting with it. So we got to change their width. Otherwise, we're going to have an issue. I'm going to float it left again so it's a little easier to see for a second. So let's do some rapid mental math. Let's see. The container is 960. Uh, container, container, container. Container is 960 pixels wide. Minus my padding on both sides leaves me 930 minus 200 leaves us 730. We're going to want a little bit more padding and margins. Let's set the width of my div and we're just going to make it generically my div to 700. Now, I could do this a few different ways. This is going to mess with my header because it's also going to get narrower. So on that one, I'm going to want to override it and have all the other divs. Otherwise, I can just specify that the objective and education are smaller. But I think I want it to 
work in a slightly different way. And I, I test after each thing that I'm doing until I get the look that I want. So I'm going to add a header. And the easiest way to do this without adding is width 100%. There we go. So what I'm trying to do is create some space so that my information will float right there. So we've got to get it to go to the other side. Now you'll notice that the div, the text is stopping here, but the divs aren't. I want to check that in Firefox and see what it's really doing. Yeah, that's really messed up. So the text is honoring the border here, or the um, end here, but this isn't. Interesting. So we can play with that a little bit. And often you have to go and do research and make things work exactly the way you want. So let's try also putting a margin on this. 15. Oh, let's make it 10 px. Now that did put things a little bit further out. And you do this one step at a time and you test. And I can make the divs float right. And you might get some unintended consequences. So you check after each one. And I guarantee this is going to make it not do exactly what I wanted. That's not actually half bad. I can sort of live with that. Okay. Now I want to kind of flip that. So let's change this to references float right. Ooh, and simply by adding that float, we made that do what we wanted. Now this does not align with that. I'm not going to worry about it. Now here we have to decide how we're going to handle this. Do we want this to have a minimum to go all the way to the bottom? And I think that's the route I'm going to go. So for my references, I'm going to do something I haven't researched and I'm not sure if it's going to work. We're going to do a minimum height. And width we can do percent. I don't know if that'll work here. Oh, it does not like it. I didn't think so. So we're going to have to do pixels. And then you just have to sort of play with it because I don't know how tall the other ones are. That can cause you some issues when you're doing stuff like that. That's why I was hoping the percentage would work. It would be cool if it did. Um, so let's take a quick look at this and see how it looks in Firefox. Uh-oh. Look what I did. When I did the divs, I made everything float. This is what I mean about checking for unintended consequences. because my container is a div. So we don't want to do that. Okay, and again, this is always, always, always a process of experimentation with me. Um, and I try to show you honestly how I really work. So putting that information on the div was a bad idea. So let's test that again. That's better, but this still isn't getting that's not honoring the padding from the other. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. 
And this is why it's a process, because even though you think you know how it works, let's actually set the header instead of being 100%, let's set it truly to what it should be, which should be about 930. So says you're taking 15 pixels off for each side for the padding. Um, it actually should be minus two more for the lines. So let's look at my header. Instead of width being 100%, let's make that 928 pixels. And let's see what that does. It's lining up nicely on this side. Eh, not bad. We can tweak it a little bit more. Um, I can probably make it actually 930. I wasn't quite sure where it was going to pull the two pixels from uh, on the inside or the outside. So let's make it that. Yes. Okay. Happy with that. So now we've got a whoa. Not what I meant to do. Now the interesting thing is, even though That's not bad. Not exactly what I'm looking for. Not bad. My margin here is going, this is overreaching my border. That looks terrible. Other than that, we're doing okay. So I'm going to change that minimum height to 550 pixels. I really wish I could set that to 100%. I can live with that. That's enough to make everything sit here correctly. If I didn't have these borders around here, you wouldn't know that it was overriding things. Now the other thing that's going to bother me here is that this comes up to a different spot than this one, and that's because of my padding. So here I'm going to have to make the top padding match that padding, or I'm going to have issues as far as not being completely happy with what I see. Don't know what I opened there, but okay. So I know that this gap being different from that gap is caused by something I did with the references section and I believe it's my margins. Yes, so this section is the objective. So I'm going to want to go into objective Margin top 10 px. Oh, that does not look perfectly aligned, but it looks closer. I don't know if that's my eyes or the screen. Let's take a quick look. That's pretty close. I think that's about as far as I'm going to go. You can see how you can arrange these. The other thing that I could do, I'm going to make this contact one act like a footer and go all the way across. So, contact again, by the end of this particular assignment, I will remember which is an ID and which is a class. And so when I could have actually done class formatting on these that I wanted to float instead of having the div float. I'm wondering why that worked. And it works to the right and it doesn't work to the left. That's interesting. That means I left something sitting there. Okay, so we can go back into my references and we're going to have it float. Right? Okay. And then if you want something to not float anymore, now I'm going to play with my contact, which is again acting like my footer. We're going to have to clear. That clears your float. We're going to clear both and close it. And that makes it automatically go down to the bottom because it has to come below this if it's not floating.
Oh, this is interesting. Where this sits may be impacting how it's floating. It does, it definitely impacts it when it's down here. I'm going to have to play with that more. I never, no matter how much I do this, I never feel like I know everything. There's always more to learn. And it really, you don't really get layout, in my opinion, until you're hand coding these, which is why I make you do it. Because if you understand how it works here, when we're using the auto layout in Dreamweaver, you'll understand if it breaks, why it broke. And that's the whole purpose of this exercise. So we've got this contact, which is going to act as my footer. And so the other thing I want to do is set my width to be the same as my head, um, header, which will be 930px. And then now that really acts the way I want my page layout to act. So we did some reasonably simple stuff. And this would look a lot better if I took off those borders, so I'm going to do that. That was just to show you where everything was. So I'm going to go into the div section. Okay, and we're going to just comment that out. And we're going to preview in Firefox. And that looks better without having the, yeah, it looks better without having the borders there. Though you would often shade something like this in a side. You might put some decorations on that um, because that's going to become an aside. And it would not be the least bit uncommon to do something like this. Make just that part stand out, and even possibly uh, make it a different color. So I'll do background color, and here I'm going to make the background color this shade of blue and then I'm going to flip the colors and make my color which is my font color or front color and I'm using the eyedropper tool here which is great I'm gonna make it this shade of sort of ivory yellow again not beautiful design I just want to show you some of the things that are possible and we'll just preview this one in Chrome. And so that shows you some of the things that you can do to do page layout and have things flow on a page. The next step is just going to be a real simple change to move to the semantic web above using things other than the div tag because the div tag was our only option until HTML5 and I did this because a lot of sites are currently coded that way so you should be able to understand the way a site is currently coded and take it into the semantic web and if you understand that historically we've used div tags with IDs we now have semantic markup based on what those divs are doing you can still leave the same IDs on them though so this is it for step four you want to save it And we'll make sure it's saved. Yeah, we'll save it as resume 4. I think I saved it, but you can never be too sure. We'll replace it. And then we're going to do File, Save as Resume 5, and we will be ready to start the next video.